Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chem major, math minor, um, magician, parapsychological researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, this is the uh, video to explain the latest of updates uh, pertaining to my, I will be uh, publishing the results over here, including um, the uh, mislabeled, uh, including explaining where the mislabeled results came in. Um, okay. I should probably give you an update from uh, what uh, from my video last Halloween. For those of you who uh, don't know what I'm up to or what this uh, experiment was about, um, back during uh, Halloween uh, last year, I uh, went on one of the local ghostly walks uh, for here in Victoria, British Columbia, and I took along with me my laptop and uh, ten um, random number generator runs, uh, retro psychokinesis runs, from Formulab.com, uh, which is a website uh, run out of Switzerland. Um, by John Walker, the founder of AutoCAD. And what he did was he got a, a sample of 85 Krypton, which um, randomly fires uh, off um, alpha particles, you know, decays uh, the various atoms in the sample decay at random times. And what happens is that um, the computer simulator that picks this up uh, measures between uh, the decay between two atoms and then waits until the third atom decays and then measures between the, um, the, decay, the, time, uh, the time period between the decay between the third and the fourth atoms. And um, if the time between atoms one and two is longer, a zero bit is uh, released, is generated. And if the uh, if the if t between uh, atom three and atom and atom four is longer, then a one bit is produced. And this is totally random. Uh, anyway, they have an entire giant server of uh, zero and one bits that have all been pre-recorded this way. And the whole process of the retropsychokinesis project is to attempt to um, observe the phenomena. Uh, observe the radioactive decay through one of a number of feedback methods and attempt to influence backwards through time um, like straight to the original random source to bias the uh, to bias the bits away from standard 50 50 chance um, now in my own personal case I've gotten statistically significant results and if you want I can give you the link to that and I should also remind you to take off the um, run marked uh, uh, April 5th, 2008 with um, uh, a negative score uh, of 2.25, odds of 1 in 73. Um, that particular run is actually part of the ghost experiment. It got mislabeled by me during the during the initial time when I set it up before I went out on my ghost hunt tonight. And um, actually, that's part of what I'm going to explain in a little bit. So I will clarify all that. Um, if you need the source, I'll give you the data. Um, right now, I'm actually too tired to put this up on... Um, I'm actually too tired to put this up in the summary. So um, here's the update. Um, back during that time period, I had uh, three statistically significant runs, two of which were two tail, uh, one P, one tail. I disregarded the P, one tail as evidence of nothing, considering the fact that um, I didn't actually specify as to whether or not the person would, uh, as to whether or not the ghost, if one existed, would influence the radioactive decay um, uh, above or below chance. I should mention that my hypothesis here was um, that basically if um, if poltergeists existed and if ghosts existed, then theoretically speaking they should want to leave a more definitive cue um, on our plane of existence. Now the problem is we both, we, we all know that um, electronic voice phenomena and um, orbs and the like uh, have easily been debunked as various things uh, such as lens flare, um, uh, para, uh, paradelia, uh, you know, uh, data searching, misinterpreting, um, sounds and static as actual human, uh, uh, you know, effectively forms of animism. Basically, uh, looking for patterns and stuff that isn't really there. Uh, you know, looking for patterns that aren't really there in random data. So, here is what I did. I took uh, the random number generator that Formula provided, and I ran a series of retro psychokinesis experiments, which I didn't observe, uh, just a series of random controls. I effectively let the number generator run. That actually may inadvertently affect the um, overall results of the uh, of the group. But anyway, I digress. That's another kettle of fish uh, that's not relevant to this. Um, the next thing on the list I did was I went and I um, basically took uh, another 10 of experimental runs um, at the time and got some results, got two p-tail. Anyway, the latest results are um, from three other that, uh, that I did tonight, um, one of which was Ross Bay Cemetery, the second of which was Beacon Hill Park, and the third of which um, was the um, uh, the McPherson Playhouse Theater, here, all here in Victoria, British Columbia. Um, the first two, I got nothing. 
uh, the third one, I did get a substantial negative statistically significant run. Uh, it had been mislabeled, however, and it's uh, technically it should be over in the ghost uh, experiment run. It's actually over in my personal retro psychokinesis uh, experiment run, which is testing for my own personal ability. Um, that has been mislabeled, um, and I'll tell you which what run to disregard and then to recalculate the uh, standard deviation based on that, and I'll give you the full directions on how to handle that. Anyway, uh, if you want to know my own personal scores. But anyway, um, here's what my uh, my results are so far. Um, neither of the original databases has actually deviated from each other, neither the control nor the experiment. They're not statistically deviant from each other. That being said, however, um, the control database, which is interesting, has absolutely no runs, at least to my knowledge. Let me confirm again. Um, actually, yeah, just let me confirm this here. Um, ghost control. Technically, to the best of my knowledge, it absolutely has no runs deviating uh, statistically from chance, and that and that counts. Uh, uh, we're looking for two p two tail here. Um, the ghost control has absolutely no runs deviating from uh, statistically significantly from chance. Whereas, um, and this is what is interesting, however. Um, uh, even though it doesn't really deviate at all from chance either, um, there are a couple, there are at least uh, three, well actually there are three um, runs that are statistically significant uh, in their own right um, that deviate from uh, uh, and the ghost experiment runs. So here's what my thoughts are. Um, I'm now going to analyze the data. Um, the deviation not from chance, that means that there's probably it's highly unlikely for ghosts. Um, however, there are a couple of other possibilities uh, for the statistically significant runs in their own right, which could be accounted for. Uh, and I'm not trying to cherry pick data here. This is just a couple of possible explanations. One of which is that the um, every single one of the statistically of the three statistically significant runs are uh, both positive and negative. Are um, are uh, just simply statistical flukes, you know, um, deviations by chance that don't necessarily happen. The second other possibility is the fact that every single one of these runs was uh, done around areas where people were. There were always people nearby, um, I mean, and not just me solo. Every other place, um, well, yeah, there were still people around, so I guess that would kind of rule it out. But the thing is that there might be a possibility that these particular areas, um, a lot of people actually fell the vibe or what have you, and that from their, um, from their collected mindset did something out of the Global Consciousness Project and influenced the runs unduly. Um, I'm going to attempt, actually, um, the other, th um, but as for the, I consider it more likely probably just a statistical fluke. However, just to be safe and just to um, suggest maybe even the possibility that there might actually be some ghost phenomena, I'm going to take the three places, which were the, um, the headquarters of the uh, ghostly walks uh, place, which is a, uh, a place where somebody actually was killed. Uh, so, you know, like there, that place actually is reputed to be haunted. I'm going to get that one, which I, where I did get statistically significant runs. Uh, the McPherson Playhouse Theater, where I also got statistically significant runs tonight. And the third spot, which I've forgotten what it is now. Um, I've got it listed down somewhere. Uh, anyway, I'm going to take these three spots. And I'm going to go back to each one. I'm going to set up a separate experiment for each run, and, one, and on the, I'm going to run five consecutive runs of retropsychokinesis each. They don't have to be compared to the ghost control. Um, these are just going to be simple runs independent in their own right. Um, they can be compared against the ghost control, uh, which will be a test for randomness later. Um, if any one of these groups, um, independently of each other, uh, gets a statistically significant accumulation, I'm going to um, assume... I'm going to assume at that point that that particular place may be haunted, and I'll go back and do another replication attempt at that spot later. Um, again, in the hopes of narrowing down uh, for spots which may actually be haunted. Uh, now, um, if nothing happens, then again, I think we can pretty well say, be safe to. I think we can pretty well safely say that it was just a, a statistical fluke for each one of those significant runs. Just to be safe, though, replication doesn't hurt. Um, you know, re a replication attempt at some of the more uh, you know, at the significant spots, um, you know, just to confirm that these weren't, uh, just to confirm that it was just a chance fluke, um, you know, it can't hurt. And besides, who knows? Maybe there actually are some ghosts in some of these areas, and uh, or or some extra dimensional, uh, or or something that we can't necessarily uh, um, describe yet, and we might be able to uh, learn a little bit more about it. Then again, it may be just a statistical fluke for all we know. Still, only time will tell. Replication can't hurt, right? After all, it's the basis for science. Toodles.